Okay, it's a tough time to be in the apparel business, but it's always important to remember that not all companies are created equal. Some are a heck of a lot more equal than others. Take PVH, the company behind Calvin Klein, Tommy Hilfiger Brands, major apparel player with an enormous international business. After having more than 22% last year, PVH's stock has kind of stalled out to next to nothing in 2017. But the company just reported after the close today, delivering a solid four cent earnings beat off a buck 19 basis, higher than expected revenue, a much more than 300 basis point increase in its gross margins. Extraordinary, that's what it makes after it's practically the cost of goods sold. Even better, PVH gave strong guidance for both the next quarter and the full year. Stock is up nicely in after hours. So let's check in with Manny Chirico, the chairman and CEO of PVH, learn more about the quarter and this company's prospects. Mr. Chirico, welcome back to Mad Money. How you doing? Good to nice see you, Manny. You All right, Manny, I was shocked to see in a sea of just red ink and for apparel makers, higher gross margins. Great forecast. We got department stores closing left and right. How are you able to pull it off? Uh, we had just very strong business, particularly in Europe and, our, and, and in Asia, driven by our China business. But also our wholesale businesses here in the United States had a very strong fourth quarter, driven by our Calvin Klein and Tommy Hilfiger businesses. Okay, so in other words, your stuff's not being discounted like everybody else. It, look, it, it's a very highly promotional okay. environment, particularly in North America. And we're planning North America very conservatively as we go into uh, 2017. But we're just seeing very strong momentum internationally behind our brand. But people have to recognize that you took a very big risk here. You put a lot of money buying par uh, big brand names for overseas when everyone was saying, why the heck are you doing that? The United States is the only place to be. It's paid off. Yeah, absolutely. I th you need to be a global player in this right. environment. You need strong brands across the board. Uh, you need that scalability and you want to have that diversity from a geographic point of view. At the same time, and the, you know, just as it's getting tough in the U.S., can you talk about that? The Congress seems to be uh, bent on putting on a border tax as if somehow we will bring back manufacturing here and not hurt the retailers that buy your stuff? Well, let, let me put it a couple of ways. I, I think competitively we're in a terrific place to manage that border. We've got two strong brands that have price elasticity, right. and I just touched on our geographic uh, diversity. But... If you, from an industry point of view, from a retail point of view, it is a terrible idea. It is basically a $500 billion hitting tax on the consumer. This will all come through as tax increase, as sell, selling price increases to the consumer going forward. And the worst thing about it is it's being hidden in a, in a charge on imports as it goes forward. And, and the last thing we want here in the United States is bringing back apparel manufacturing to the United States. That, that, this is a a low-skill, high-labor content business that basically at best we could pay minimum wage. And why do we want to sit here and compete in that product category with the likes of Ethiopia, Bangladesh, right. Right. Cambodia, Kenya? We want to compete in high-tech manufacturing, not low-tech Low cost so the, the people who will be hurt by this are the mainstream working guys, maybe even people who, who uh, voted for Trump. Look, uh, I, I can't imagine that President Trump and the White House would be supporting the border tax. I know it's been batted back right. and forth, but if you think about everything that he stands for and taking care of his constituent base, th th it just doesn't make sense at all. This is, a, this is really a big tax on importers and retailers that support the retailers. The retailers are the largest employee sector what? in the United States. I mean, uh, you think about <laughs> the, top, the top 10 companies uh, from an employment point of view in the U.S., in, in the private sector, six are retailers, the likes of Walmart, Target, uh, Macy's, J.C. Penney's, Kohl's, Home Depot, Costco. And I don't know why the value of a manufacturing job that pays $60,000 is more valuable than an assistant store manager making $75,000 at one of these key retailers. I think it's really, I, I couldn't be more passionate about how I think this no, is bad clearly. for the consumer, the American tax base. I think this is, it's just ill-founded. Now, I know not all of them can make it. I, now, Manny, I happen to go in advance of you coming here. On Sears website, Manny, they sell a ton of Hilfiger and a ton of Calvin Klein. They put out a statement today saying there's substantial doubts about their ability to be a going concern. What does someone like you do in that situation? Well, I guess a couple of things. You know, in a, on a dot-com business, sometimes retailers that you don't sell to can have availability of product. They, they, it gets diverted through the market. Okay. And I can tell you that is a tiny, 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 tiny business. And it's not, not us doing it directly. It's going through third-party players. Okay. Sears for us, which in its heyday was a major yeah. player, 
today has been wound down and is being planned very, very conservatively. It's just not a material player for us as we go. Not going to get hurt if something bad happens. No, I mean, we'll have to manage through no. a small hiccup, but we've got it planned for the balance of this year very, very conservatively. One of the things, I, I just came back from Europe. Manny, it's booming. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing it in, in what, both in, re in uh, department stores, but also in your, in your standalones? Yeah, absolutely. Our, our comps and our standalone stores, Calvin and Tommy Hilfiger, uh, for the fourth quarter, and as we've gone into the first quarter, are running high single-digit positive comps uh, in, in that market. And even more importantly, our order book for fall for both brands, the Tommy brand is up 10% on a really large base. Right now, we know that. Uh, we know what we're looking Calvin at. Calvin Klein is up over 25% as that brand just grows into it. So we're really seeing phenomenal growth throughout Europe, and it's across Europe, from the UK, Germany, Southern Europe, Spain, and Italy, we're really seeing fantastic growth with both brands. No wonder European stock markets, people don't realize it, but are beating our stock markets because things are getting better over there. That's Manny Trico, Chairman and CEO of PBH, best apparel and retail story out there. Mad Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.